If anyone causes one of these little ones that believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. This is the only passage in the Bible in which Jesus Christ says that a man who corrupts a child should better kill himself. Would it make any difference to you whether your child ended up with a sect, pedophiles, or an organ donor? Or does it matter at all? Pedophiles is the worst option, I guess. Otherwise... Why? Because it's evil, right? Though, as a person who wants to sell their child, I'm in no position to judge. No, I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter after all. Honestly, I just want to get rid of a problem. Someone from the criminal underworld got in touch with me, told me about a girl willing to sell her child to a brothel or as an organ donor. I decided to save that child and make a documentary about it. I began by removing the girl from a criminal environment and finding her a place to stay in a different town. The sale of the child was foiled by the COVID-19 pandemic and the restrictions on cross-border traffic. What happened when you found out you were pregnant? What were your first thoughts? I started looking for a solution. I immediately knew I couldn't have the child, so I was looking to resolve the problem. I believe I made the best decision I could. Although I managed to relocate the girl to a different town, she was still controlled by an agent who wanted to sell her child. When we already knew she was pregnant, I contacted my colleague a well-known person in the criminal underworld, and simply told him I had a child for sale. I wanted to sell that child for spare parts, to a brothel, to pedophiles. I didn't give a fuck where to go. I just wanted to sell it and make money. So he said he'd help me. What do you mean, to a brothel? Such small kids are used in brothels too? Of course. It's pretty common in Germany. Meaning? Meaning, such small kids are first put up with a family that raises them until they turn three or four, and then they are sent to a brothel. The sale of a newborn baby is carried through in such a way that in the hospital the mother signs the child trafficker in as the father. Then he takes the baby abroad. No one will ever look for them, as the baby is officially somewhere in Europe with its father. Do you have any emotional attitude toward the baby? No, no. I'm trying to think practically. And when you learnt the baby's gender, did that little person become more real in your head? No, no. What do you feel when you look at your belly? Nothing. Disgust. I don't like it at all. I'd like to get rid of it. Why do you think your life would be over if you had the baby? Because it's slavery. It's a tie. It's sleepless nights. A baby's not a dog you can teach to be alone for several hours or so. It's not like a cat, for example, that you can leave it with a litter box, a bowl of water, some food, and go away for three days. Which is more profitable? Selling the child for organs or to a brothel? For the mother, selling the child as an organ donor. Do you know the final price of the organs? How much a child like that costs in Europe? Yes, I do. All in all, how much is the heart, for example? I know the liver costs 70,000 polislotties. 
It's a black market. So it's obvious only wealthy people who have a lot of money are involved. If their child is ill, this is their way to ensure it's longer life. What's the greatest demand? The liver, the heart, the retina, the eyes, the retina. Do you know the price of the retina or the heart? The heart is worth almost 70,000, but euros. What's your approach to selling a child? Honestly, if it wasn't for this child, who is merchandise, I wouldn't be able to do it. But the thing is, if there's a possibility to earn quite good money on it, why not? They offer 50 to 150,000. It depends. Do you believe it's a good price, 50, for a child? Without intermediaries, I'd say it's enough. Enough for what? To make up for those nine months. Where else could a young person like me earn 50,000 in nine months? Have you thought what you'd buy with that money? No, but if I could afford it, perhaps a nice car? Clothes? A phone? New shoes? Did you get any offers? We are offered 80,000. Was that offer attractive? It seemed so at the beginning. Especially since I knew she'd have to bear that child and then go through a recuperation process. So I knew she'd need money. Therefore it seemed attractive, but later I did more research and figured out someone was trying to con us in a way that instead of giving us the price in euros, they did it in Polish lotties. What's the name of the portal? Its name is Sperm Donors Let's Make Babies. It's a website where different people post their ads. Women who want to give away or sell their children. Women seeking co-parenting. I posted an ad in which I offered a child for money. After I'd done that, I received replies from four families, but I also read other posts. I liked two of them because they were looking for girls. How did you figure out it was trading? Every time a little baby is involved, we know these ads have been posted by people who want to get rid of such a baby. And they don't care where the baby will end up. Our post was among them. All I cared about was that somebody took the child and paid, so that I could share the money with the mother. So, you didn't care much about the children's fate? No, I don't really. I care about my own child. My child is most important to me. Do you believe in God? No, I don't believe in God. Do you believe people get punished for doing such things later in life? No, I don't. If that was the case, I would have gotten punished long ago. Hundreds of times. So as to not think of the unborn baby as an object and to treat it like a human being, I gave it a name. Do you think your baby has feelings? Do you identify yourself with it? No. No, I don't. I think it's too small. A baby like that can't understand pain, fear, or happiness. At least that's what I think. I don't identify myself with it at all. 
Do you know it can hear your voice now? Yes, but I'm not giving it a thought. And the beating of your heart? I'm not thinking about it. Why not? Why would I? I don't feel a need for that. There's no point in thinking about it. There's no point at all. I'm here, and the baby's there. We are two completely different worlds. At least, that's how I see it. Did you give your baby a name? No. What name will you give it in hospital, then? I don't know. Perhaps I'll ask a midwife to come up with something. I have no idea. I'm not thinking about those things yet. Once I got involved in all this, I gave the baby a name. What is it? Marcelina. Very nice. Let it be Marcelina then. I thought I'd like to think and perceive him or her as a human being and not as a dehumanized object, so that I could communicate with it in my head as with a concrete person. I believe that giving it a name would, in a way, cause you to show interest in the whole process, in how it should look, and some things like preparing a layette for the hospital. I guess it might have a huge impact on my head. That's why I avoid such situations. I haven't given it a name. I haven't thought about a name. I don't do such things. I'm just supposed to bear this child. Do you consider a possibility that your emotions might change and you'll regret it? No. I was afraid they might open the borders at any time and the mother would flee abroad to sell the child there. In order to have control over this, I had to get to the trafficker. Do you think it's possible for me to talk to someone from Germany who specializes in child brothels? You know what? Or transplants? I guess it is possible. But someone would have to set you up with a person. Even more so since those child brothels for pedophiles are mainly run by Muslims. Why? Their religion and culture does not prohibit them from having sex with children. They have wives or husbands who are five or ten years old. So it's not a problem for them. Therefore, it's the Arabs that mainly run those places. How can such an interview be arranged? I'd have to ask around. Do it then. I will. For over a month, I was trying to get in touch with a trafficker. What did the child trafficker say? Help me understand what I need to do. Hold on. Go on Skype, and then what? Yes, go on Skype. Enter your login. Your login is an email address that has been set up for the sake of this conversation. What's the address? The address is greatass2020 at hotmail.com. Then you need to enter a password to your Skype account. It starts with a capital letter, demoralization, and you're in. Your nickname, your fake Skype first and last name is Grey Zone. He will... Grey Zone has already been set up? Yes. I don't have to do anything? Exactly. This is your first and last name, Grey Zone. You will receive an invitation from him. You won't see his login, only his nick Eminence Germany. The guy needs to feel safe. He's also afraid. Weeks passed, but the Skype conversation didn't come through. Why does he keep postponing our interview? Is it so hard to set up? 
I received a message. It was on Sunday or Saturday. Or was it Friday? I can't remember exactly. On Friday. Or on Saturday, he sent me a message that he was very sorry, but he had to go away to pick up some merchandise. I figure he wasn't going to pick up a cardboard of smokes or vodka, but he was going to pick up a child. For him, a living child, a living human being is merchandise. He doesn't even call a child a child, he calls it merchandise, because that's what it is for him. It's an object that can be monetized. He'd sell his own mother for organs if she wasn't so old. No one wants her organs anymore. Does he have his own child? Yes, a son. Do you think he has any human feelings for him? No, because for what I know, his son cooperates with him. So it's more of a business partnership rather than a father-son relationship. So his son kidnaps children too? He delivers them. Despite the fact the whole thing takes place in Germany or in the Netherlands. There are organized rings here that work non-stop like ants to track those women. To get to know their daily routines and habits. To see what they do where their children are, where they leave them. Therefore, I believe this practice is meticulously planned and carried through. It's a whole... It's a whole process. It's a whole team of people that look for those women, right? Of course it is. When I talk to him, he told me he comes to Poland, for example and very often looks for the girls himself. Allegedly. Where? In parks, stores, restaurants, cafes. Allegedly, after so many years in the business, he has an 80% chance to successfully identify a pregnant girl who would at least be willing to talk to him. He identifies them like police officers are taught to identify criminals. Yes. As they walk the streets to identify thugs, so does he find his victim? To find the right girl. He told me it depends on a number of factors, clothes, behavior, or appearance. Later, when he's already talking to the girl, he told me that pretty soon, over a cup of tea or something, he's able to tell whether he's wasted his time or could take it a step further. How much do those girls charge for this? About two or three thousand euros. Five thousand euros if they are resistant. But it often happens they get no money at all. You mean they're conned, or are they yes. so keen to get rid of the problem? No, they are conned. It does happen. They are told they'll get paid in arrears, so they give their child away and are left with nothing? Yes, or they get 100 euros to keep them smiling, just to have them get a glimpse of cash. So he doesn't even have to bother to kidnap the children, as it would be a serious thing, including the police hunt and everything, yes? No, he doesn't, but if there is demand, as he puts it, if there is demand for a particular commodity, it is sometimes a matter of hours. Then the whole machine he's involved with focuses on delivering a specific child at a specific age, so they have to kidnap it. How many brothels do they have? Four. How many children are in each of them? Last time I asked, there were seven of them in one of the German brothels. Do those children live there? Yes. 
Do they even leave the brothel? No. So they never go out for a walk, right? They do go outside with a chaperone that watches them, but they never go beyond the wall or the fence. So it happens inside a house, right? Yes, in a house. A regular house. So a child ends up there at the age of about four? Yes, about four. Why four? It depends on what the clients want. And then the child is stuffed with drugs? Yes, they're stuffed with drugs, cocaine or amphetamine. But the child usually has intercourse with a pedophile about once a week only. That's why there are so many of them, to stay in business. There must be a lot of children. Why only once a week? A child can't be kept on cocaine or amphetamine all the time, because it might kill them. So they're given drugs only during an intercourse? Before an intercourse, whenever the need arises. It's such a hermetic world that they know even several days earlier when and which pedophile will come and ask for a child. Till what age does a child remain in a brothel? Until the age of 12 or 13. Then what? They are sent to a regular brothel, because such a child is no longer able to change their life. Their mind is so fucked up, and so is their world, that the only thing they can do is go to an adult brothel. And how long do they stay there? As long as they can, if they're good at what they do. Can they go out, or do they remain locked up? They may go out, just like in the brothels in Poland, but a child like that generally becomes a social misfit. They suffer from social phobias as they have never gone to school. They are taught on the spot what to say or how to sign their name at the most. After many weeks, the agent told me the trafficker would contact me by phone that night. I'm really glad you finally called me and we can talk directly. Because with intermediaries, intentions are never fully clear, and so on. I'd rather meet in person. That'd be great. Just tell me when we could do it. Do you have any idea? Do you have any plans? Or is it still up in the air? I have to stay here for a few days. I have some business to attend to. The trafficker broke off contact with me, and it seemed we'd never get to meet. No, nothing. What do you think might have happened? I was afraid it was some sort of setup. Do you know how many Polish children have no graves? So fucking many. The trafficker would change the time of our meeting several times. Finally, 30 minutes before the interview, he told me where to go. What kind of words do those guys use? Do they say merchandise and stuff? How does it work? That's the way. That's the way. What's the term? A dolly, usually. Does the gender matter? Or are boys called that too? It matters. Merchandise is usually used for the boys. And dolly for the girls. For him, a 10-year-old boy is too old. A very little child, a three or four years old boy, or a three or four years old girl, likes to touch. And lick a little weenie. And the intercourse is between the thighs and the buns. What does the child's day look like? How many times a day or a week do they have sex? It depends. You can't have a child for an hour. 
It's a whole day, or a whole night event. At least for several hours. Does it go on day after day? Or are there any breaks because of the drugs they're given? No, no, no. Or does it basically depend on the number of clients? If one child is exhaustive, there is another one. While the first one is recuperating, right? Yes, the child must eat something. They're also given some vitamins, something nutritious. Are they drip-fed? Yes. Do they get vaginal abrasions or something? They get some medical care. Someone takes care of them, so they function and look well. So it's kind of breeding, human breeding. Yes, exactly. Sometimes the children refuse to eat. Then they get injections. It's something like a PTSD? Kind of. Are they injected with nutrients or drugs? It may be drips or it may be injections. The women that look after them are kind of good aunties. Though some of them are not that good, as one of them pulls their hair until they do what she wants, or respond when she calls out their names, because at the beginning, they don't respond to anything, not even their names, as if the kid's completely turned off. How many of those brothels do you think there are in Europe? I know of about four. In which countries? Belgium, Germany, Poland. Where is the one in Poland? Tri City. In a regular house as well? Yes. Those intercourses take place before a child is taken away for organs. Does the client have to pay more for that? Of course. I believe the price amounts to... I mean, really, the whole team is engaged. So it must be around... half a million euros. And he's aware the child becomes useless after that. Do those four-year-olds live together with seven or eight-year-olds, or do they go somewhere else? No. Seven or eight years old are good for regular sex. And those little kids are separated. From what age can you have an intercourse with a child without risking tearing them apart? Well, I'd say... They can have regular sex from the age six or eight and earlier. That is when recycling begins. Recycling? Yes, at a VIP price. VIP entertainment. He likes it when he shows his dick in. Blood spilling. He massacres the child. Does he murder the child or leave it to die? Whatever turns him on. But then, the child is a wreck anyway. How long can a child survive in such conditions? If there's a client... for the VIP... satisfaction... then they won't survive. Children who are six or over 
will pull through. How long do they stay in a brothel? Those kids are hooked on drugs, so... I'm not sure. Until they turn 14. What then? They get disposed of. Disposed of, or sent to another brothel? Disposed of. They're usually disposed of because they're no longer eligible for transplants. Due to drug-related body exhaustion? Yes. When the child is no longer attractive, when it's useless and can't be used for spare parts any longer, they make movies and post them on the dark net. What exactly have you seen? Suffocation during sex is a standard thing. It is a common fantasy. To be doing it to the very end. What about non-standard things? A non-standard thing? Is to simply fuck everything up with your dick. In order to get to the truth, I spent several dozen hours talking to him. A kid that already has some understanding of what's going on around them, because, to some extent, a 12-year-old is aware of certain things. He's fed such a vision of life. or death, actually, that, in a way, his reality becomes totally messed up. As there are perversions, where they get turned on by pushing sex to the insane limits, so that the kid takes their own life during an intercourse. How? Uh, for example, some kids slash their wrists or beg to be choked to death. They grab their hands and put them on their neck and squeeze them by themselves. That's what turns them on. Do they have any sophisticated toys? Or are there no toys? You know, I, I guess... All of them have their favorite fluffy toys. Some have their favorite pillows. The kids often fight over their fluffy toys. Kids don't hug each other. They're afraid of being touched. They are. They seem to know. They're even afraid to touch their own bodies. I don't know any more cold-blooded woman than those from that brothel. The ones that take part in all this? Yes, the ones that allegedly look after the kids. Are they ordinary women? Do they have children, husbands, their own homes? Or are they young individuals? No, no. More mature? They're also European, and... At least two of those that I have personally seen have brought their own children there. I'll send you a picture. I look pretty worn out because I'd been traveling. There are two girls there sitting on my lap. Those kids took to me so much, and I love children dearly. When I entered, they got pretty scared of me. Somehow. They caught my attention and my eyes smiled at them. My eyes, not my face. You just can't put it in words. One grabbed my leg, the other grabbed my other leg, 
I sat on the bed. How old were they? Roughly? About 10. They started singing songs for me, both of them, and both were jealous of each other. How did they manifest their jealousy? They just wanted to be saved. Something I couldn't do. When talking to the trafficker, I knew I was looking at the devil in the eye. Do those people believe in Satan? How do they worship him? Are they deep in that oculate shit? It's a sect. Those people don't even greet each other when they greet each other. I mean, they don't greet each other by just saying hello or good morning or guten tag. Or whatever normal people say when they greet each other. That's not what they say. So what do they say? Ave fucking Satan or no, what? No, no, no. They use completely different two words. What words? No, I'm not going to utter them. Why? I promised myself I'd never say them. What if I turn the camera off? Turn the camera off and I'll tell you. Have you ever seen any Satanist artifacts when you went to visit those individuals? Any oculate objects like pentagrams, inverted crosses or something? There is a pentagram under that inscription. Really? That was fucking there, man. The dude has a pentagram in his house? Yes. There are those words I told you they use to greet each other. That kind of our good morning? And there's a pentagram under them. There is the evil one behind the children's suffering. It's obvious. Working on a girl. It's not a quick and easy process. It doesn't take a day or a week. From my experience, I can tell you, it took us 18 months to work on a mother. She didn't know about it. But there was always someone watching her, whether she was taking good care of her child, whether everything was okay. At the same time, we pressed her relentlessly to abandon that bastard. Did she sell her child to a brothel? She didn't fucking care. She took the dough, and that was it. How much did she get? She got around 10,000 euros in cash. How old was the child? Four or five? And she sold the kid? Yes, she was happy everyone had left her fucking alone, including the kid. She thought the kid was up for adoption by a good family, abroad. Where did it go? The kid was ugly. It wasn't very beautiful. And generally she treated it in such a way that even I got to detest the kid as a result. But they gladly accepted it. She thought the kid was adopted, but in fact, it went for spare parts. Whatever comes to light becomes known. I wanted the devil to reveal himself and show his true face. How much would I have to pay for a donor kit if I wanted to buy one from you? Well, you know, I just get my cut. I can't really tell. How much do you get? 
I get 15,000 euros for abroad with a kid. For carrying through the whole process of adoption? Yes. So if I ordered a child from you, how long would I have to wait? Do you have any special requests? A boy? A girl? Let's say I do, or don't. It'll be faster if I don't. So, just a child, right? Yes. Two weeks. Contrary to what you might think, it's hard work. So I don't get a hard on when I think about those girls. I'm not in a hurry, but I do get pressed. Every day, in the morning, I try to go by the book and use the power of positive thinking. Then I can see the nose and the eyes of a cute little doe before my face. Those little pets look so sweet. How long does it usually take to bring a girl around? Bring a girl around? I mean, from the moment you meet her to when she decides to hand the child over. Two or three meetings? Unbelievable. How long are those meetings? There's a party. I take her to a party, and I'll work on her then. I test her, but not only me. There are several of us. We help each other. I get help. We support each other. And do the job. There's a reason why we're there. The girl decides not to fuck me on the first date. I don't give a fuck about fucking her. Okay, so what are the options from there? Brothel or spare parts? It depends. If there's demand, they will even pull a child out of the brothel. From the brothel for spare parts? Yes. So the parts are a priority? Yes, absolutely. They bring in huge money quickly. I post an ad that I'm a businessman working abroad. I visit Poland once a month and I need company. I want to be a sponsor. And girls reply. There are lots of replies. You test them. It depends on what you're after, whether we're after the organs or a child. What our living conditions are and so on. Then you go and hunt the girl down. It sometimes happens those children are handicapped in some way. So you start working on that. Those girls are not particularly educated or intelligent. The child stands in their way. Taking a child away from them is not a problem. So what qualities should an ideal child-dealing girl possess? First of all, she must be selfish. You can see right away, she's ready to kiss your ass and do anything you want. Since it's all about children, you begin by asking, do you have any children? Yes? What age? Let's say she's got a six-year-old girl. Okay. And you immediately offer her a trip to, let's say, Masary, to sail in a boat there. She's on cloud nine. You take her there for two or three days, watch her whether she calls the child or her mother. Usually it's her mother that stays with the child and keeps calling. And when she answers her mother's calls, you hear what she says and how she says things, and whether she's pissed off. Then her mother calls again, and she's yours. You pretend you're having fun. We talk. I tell her she's got a cute daughter. Of course, I am proud of her. I took after her. It turns out she has children, and that's when he cuts in. 
Children? What the fuck do you need children for? Why would you take that on your shoulders? We kind of talk like a friend to a friend. And of course, we watch her reaction. If there's anything we can do at all, we work on her. Let's say she agrees. Yes, it sometimes happens, the girl tells you. You know, that fucking kid? It's just fucking trouble. And I don't know what to do with this shit and so on. Do you think it'll be over once you bear the child? Yes, I think it'll be all over once I have that child. Once it gets out of my body for good. It'll go to its world while I remain in mine. I'm not going to see it ever again. I won't feel it, I won't hear it. Many people won't understand it, but... Most of them have never been in such a situation. Carrying a child you don't want is so devastating to your mind that it's hard to imagine. Despite what the women were planning to do after the child was born, the agent brought a layout for Marcelina. Pats for you. Give me my stuff. I don't care about the child. These pants let me fucking breathless. They're awesome. This is a puppy's paw. Do you know why it's here? Because underneath it says, I love my mom. Why have you covered it? Because the child won't have a mom. But I've not covered, I love my dad. We needed a midwife to help with the delivery. I set up a consultation, which, due to the COVID-19, had to be done online. Have you been pregnant before? No. Whom are you carrying? A girl. What is her name? Marcissia Marcelina. I hoped that conversation would stir some emotions in the mother. You'll have contractions every five minutes. You'll watch them for an hour to see if they're getting stronger. The next hour... Once again, please. You got distracted. I got distracted. I'm basically trying to give you a patchwork of specific information. It's difficult. I'm not getting attached. It's not difficult. I don't care whether it's difficult or not. I just don't form any sort of attachment. I just want to learn some basic stuff and go and bear that child and end my adventure with it. I don't want to elaborate on that. I'm not even asking you to. I approached my interview with the trafficker as if it was a police interrogation, where you often go back to the same issues in order to establish the truth. I found about 500 such girls on the internet. If a mother goes abroad to give her child up for adoption, the mother ends up in a brothel, and she gets hooked on drugs. And so does the child. A child is a kind of merchandise that brings pure profit as it requires no investments and earns its living by working in a brothel. And when there's a bid for an organ, it goes on an operating table for disassembly. The mother also goes for spare parts. Were you afraid of meeting such a person? No. How come? I believe a person should be approached in a holistic manner. There's a task to be done. Since he's a professional, I also try to be professional without asking unnecessary questions. Brief statements, short questions, whatever I need to know, whatever's essential. Did he make a good impression on you? He won me over with his approach and composure. Those girls think they'll return to Poland with a lot of money. They think they'll get rich, but are unaware they're on their way to a brothel. They don't know what'll happen to them, or that they'll get hooked on drugs or lose their freedom. 
And you know what I felt while recruiting those girls? I didn't give a shit about those girls and their kids. All I cared about was the money. The adoption of a child is carried through in such a way that the girl gets married to an Arab, a Muslim. The Muslim law allows marrying even underage girls. Then he gets to adopt the child. He takes the child away to his country, a Muslim one. In a legit way. In Muslim countries, papers are easy to get. For 50 local dollars, you can get any document you want. Changing the first or last name is not a problem. And so any trace of the child is lost. What then? They go to Egypt for a couple of days. They get new papers through some formal correction of the name and the last name in a matter of hours. And the child returns as a completely different person. It returns to Europe, to the brothel. And no one is ever looking for that child again. The trace is lost. A child had left. It had a name and a last name. And a different person came back to Europe later. And the mother? She goes to a brothel in Europe. What does it look like when they bring you kids for sale from Ukraine? When a child comes from Ukraine, it gets new papers here in Poland. These are another child's papers with an identical ID. Only the photo of the imported kid is swapped. And practically the trace is lost here. The child goes abroad with its new Polish ID. So you need the ID in case of inspection? Yes, while crossing the border. Just in case. Then there are no more problems, because the real child stays in Poland while the other one is officially non-existent. Yes. And what happens with kidnapped children? Children are kidnapped only in urgent cases. If there's an emergency, someone got ill, there's a problem and an urgent transplant is needed, that's when kidnapping takes place. Why is kidnapping so rare? Because it's dangerous. Dangerous for the organization. It doesn't pay to keep a kidnapped child in a brothel. Because things may happen, and there may be trouble. It would be a total disaster if such a kid was found. What's the difference whether they find a kidnapped or a regular child in a brothel? Because you may pretend it's not really a brothel? No one is going to admit it's a brothel. But there's a difference. Because if the child is being searched for by Interpol, it's a serious shit. But you can always account for a regular child. Whether the child has been adopted and went through the adoption process with an Arab father, or in any other way, rather than admitting the child's been sold or kidnapped. The client doesn't have to come to the brothel in his own car. He is brought there. The meeting spot is established earlier. It's different with different clients. Even the clients can't see each other. It happens that they even tear infants apart with their dicks. The baby dies. In that room? Yes? Yes, in that room. The moment the client informs he wants to kill the child, a whole group is immediately set up to pick up the organs. We schedule it so that everything overlaps, so that we have a recipient ready. Whatever can be said. Is the child still alive when it's being taken to the operating room? It's done on the spot in the villa. Is that where the organs are retrieved? Yes, there's a special sterile room there. When they torture those children, the children get broken, 
Their arms get broken. Their legs. Their legs get pulled out of the hips. They often get beaten up. Torn apart. Organs, buttholes. Do you mean those little babies get their legs pulled out? Yes. So it's sadism? Yes, sadism. Infants always suffer. They all do. Later, that child is useless. Do you ever think you might get punished for that at some point of your life? No, I never do. I believe if you do not think about such things, they never happen. Older children are exploited for a while. They're addicted to the drugs they're sedated with. But infants become useless. They go for spare parts. Older kids. Can't take it mentally. Also because of the drugs, they ration them out to make the costs as low as possible. Because the kids are nothing more than just merchandise. That also has an impact on their mental state. One boy slashed his wrists. He couldn't take it. All that manhandling and the kind of life he had there. They did save him, of course. But he was sent for spare parts. The drugs put children in such extreme psychotic state. That they hurt themselves. The kids' clients are very rich. They even come in their own private jets and helicopters from fuck who knows where. They are picked up at different locations. Filthy rich. They pay a fortune to spend time with a child. Everything's arranged with a medical team. They know the child will not survive. And if it becomes crippled for life, nobody's going to look after it. So it immediately becomes an organ donor. Those brothels have branches all over the world. With operating rooms. There are high security sites. Few people know about them. There are no regular brothels. We're talking about huge money here, so... They are perfectly organized. It's not just some dude or madam sitting there. It's all professionally set up. Like a corporation? Yes, like a corporation. As complex as a corporation. There must be a medical team on standby. Someone must look after those kids. Someone must organize. The transplants and everything. There must also be someone that helps them. Search clients for the organs out. It will continue. The demand is huge and... They won't change. To stop me from saving the child, the devil struck at the mother. The darkness that the mother colluded with turned against her and pushed her into depression. At some point, the mother told us she wanted to kill herself and the baby. What if they say November 9th? Then you'll know it's going to happen. What's the problem? I guess November 9th may sound stressful to you, and you'd want to get rid of the baby sooner. I can't promise that I won't hurt myself. It's starting to mess my head up. Are you having suicidal thoughts? Yes, I do. 
Where did they come from? From all this. How could suicide help? It'd give me peace of mind. Do you think killing yourself would rid you of the problem? Yes. Do you know what impact it'll have on you if the USG guy tells you're due sooner? But it may be delayed too, right? And I can't predict. I'm not able to... How I'll behave in such a situation, I just can't. We need a good USG test result. Once she has it, perhaps it'll show that she's due on, say, the 20th, or the 27th, or even the 9th, November, or the 5th of November. Once she has the results in her hand, it may be easier for her. Are the suicidal thoughts getting worse? Yes. Have you already pictured in your mind how you're going to do it? I have a friend who's acquainted with those things. He wouldn't say what kind of substance it is, but I know it's effective. He prepares specific med cocktails, and for the right price, he provides you with a package. A suicide package? Yes. How do you find him? through a friend who had problems before and wanted to commit suicide. She used his services and she's no longer here. How much is such a suicide package? 380 zlotys. Are you going to kill yourself and the child just because you can't wait 12 days? That's why I need that paper. I need the C-section because I can't promise I won't hurt myself. Doesn't it thinking about her help? Doesn't she give you any motivation or relief? This child gives me nothing. Absolutely nothing at all. I want to get rid of it. I'm not identifying myself with it. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not looking at it. I'm not talking to it. I don't pay attention to it moving. I just don't think about it. I don't want it. I just don't want it. For me, every day, when I get up in the morning and look at myself, at my belly and stuff, it is just another day filled with pain. I wanted to be at Marcelina's birth, but it turned out the mother couldn't wait until her due date. Fearing for the child's life, the only solution was a day-to-day -day C-section. It's my bed. The bed of a lady I share a room with. I've already signed all the papers some kind of anamnesis for the anesthesiologist. I've had dinner, I got my supper. Typical hospital food, not too tasty. You can't have everything. I'm not alone in the room. There's another lady, but she tried to talk to me about the baby, about my situation. Is it a boy or a girl? The lady's having her second child. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Anyway, she tried to have a conversation with me. I told her the truth about my situation and she never spoke to me again. As for the baby's test results, they were good. Almost three kilos of a girl. My mental state is getting better. I feel more relieved, but I'm getting stressed about the very surgery. Five forty. I don't really know what it means. 
After CTG, I'm supposed to get washed and put on a shirt for the C-section. And come see the midwives. Pretty stressed out, but only about the surgery rather than all this. I have no thoughts about the child. Do you have any doubts? I don't think so. No, I don't have any. I don't because I have no doubts for now. I'm not sure about tomorrow though, but common sense will prevail over them anyway. Have you thought whether you'll ever have children again? Generally, yes, but for now, after reaching this point and considering what's going on, I don't think I want to have a child at all. I'm horrified to see how underdeveloped my maternal instinct is. Marcelina was born at 12 p.m. Healthy. She scored 10 points and weighed 3 kilograms. Okay, let me get up slowly. How are you feeling? I'm good. It hurts, but I guess it's normal. Have you seen the baby, or haven't you? No, I had a screen in front of my face. There was a screen. But generally, it was so nerve-wracking for me that I... I can't even describe it. Nerve-wracking in what sense? Because of the childbirth, or because of the surgery? I don't know. Everyone and the whole atmosphere were kind of, kind of grave a bit. It took 40 minutes. It was horrible at the beginning because I couldn't breathe and my heart was rushing. Then it got so serene, I, I almost drifted away. I didn't feel anything. I didn't know you feel nothing at all. First, I could feel some jerking in my stomach, and after that, yeah, basically nothing at all. How do you feel about getting rid of the baby? Do you feel relieved after the baby's been removed from your body? Yes, I feel greatly relieved. The C-section was yesterday. Today, I feel way better. Last night was a disaster. I couldn't sleep. I was being fed meds through a drip and some oral pills, plus hydroxazine because I couldn't sleep due to the pain. Do I think about my kid? I did dream about her, but I can't. I'm still... I'm too dopey to wrap my head around it. And I don't really miss her, but I would like to see her, but I know it to do no good. We need to see that child. I'm not sure I can take it. I mean, maybe in the evening, but I, I can't promise it won't mess up my head. Okay, you'll see how you'll feel. Later, when I'm able to go there myself, do what I've got to do, film her, take some pictures and leave, I think I'll be good. But to lie with her in the patient recovery room? I get it. But could you spare her 10 minutes? Couldn't you? What am I supposed to do with her for 10 minutes? I asked the mother to show me the baby, as I wanted to see Marcelina at least once.
The mother wanted no contact with the baby whatsoever. She told me the worst moment came when Marcelina suddenly sneezed and looked her in the eye. I don't know how she's doing. I just want to get out of the hospital as soon as possible to cut myself off. I'm alone in the room. I mainly sleep and watch TV. I walk around a little, nothing special. So I'm sitting here. Thinking, it does me no good. I'm, I must occupy myself with something. I asked myself if the police were able to save that child and give me 100% guarantee she'd be safe. While delving into the topic, I came across a moving appeal of another mother to the kidnapper of her child. I decided to get in touch with her. On the day you came into my life and changed it into a nightmare, that day you kidnapped my son. Although so many years have passed by, my pain and my longing for him have grown even bigger. Finding Tomok is the sense of my life. Do you know how it hurts to be separated for such a long time? Do you know the pain of losing such a young child? My husband was upstairs, and we were in the course of building our house. The first thing I did when I entered our property was ask him where Tomak was. He said he had seen him playing 10 or 15 minutes before. I looked around, but he was nowhere to be seen. I put down my shopping bag with groceries and walked back outside. I called out to him, to no avail. I remained outside the house. I sat on the steps, not knowing what to do with myself. I didn't know where to go. In the dark, I stumbled into the worst and the darkest places, despite being a total coward. On such occasions, you feel no fear. You do not fear for yourself. It's your priority to find the missing child. While sitting on those steps, I began to pray. I said, God, if you need to punish someone, punish me and spare the child. Don't let him feel the pain of separation. Because a child is not an object that we throw away once we get bored with it. It's a living being. You've got to fend for it. You can't give up. So, 30 years later, I'm still fighting, and I believe my son is alive. There is an age progression image of Tomek in his 20s. I hope this progression shows exactly what Tomov would look like at the age of 22. In 2015, we set up a Facebook profile. Tomov's profile. A missing person. The moment my appeal to the kidnapper came out and Tomok's age progression was publicized. We got a message with a photo from what later turned out to be a fake account. That Tomok, that missing Tomok, was now Ryan Pitts. It also included his whereabouts. When I opened that photograph, I almost passed out. I sat on a stool and said, God Almighty, this is my Tomok. The two men were so similar that the Polish police decided to contact the FBI. 
Do you think the FBI did all they could? They checked it just to get us off their back. So we leave them alone. I know our side was putting pressure on them. FBI said they check Ryan Pitt's birth certificate. Because he got married there, he had to have a valid copy of his birth certificate, right? And they sent us information that his birth certificate was checked and that it was an original document. And that was it. There is no prior information about him. No place of birth. Even his date of birth differs on different sites on the internet. So it really makes me wonder. And all the information that you can find about him starts from the age of five. In my opinion, FBI failed. They dropped the case too early and didn't explain the kidnapping. Doing the research on that family's past, we found information that Ryan's grandparents were patrons of an orphanage located in their town. I guess switching one kid with another wouldn't be difficult at all. Ryan Pitts was a soldier decorated by President Obama. When he was decorated by President Obama, several interviews appeared. And there was an interview with his grandmother, who told Ryan's story. And in that interview, she made it clear that Ryan had to fight for himself since his early childhood. My husband's DNA and mine are in the general database, and they are available for verification. It's generally known that all the U.S. Army soldiers submit their DNA, so the DNA results are available in the U.S. military database, but no one wants to give us access to it, so there is the possibility to verify that. Ryan himself doesn't want to give his consent. He doesn't agree for DNA verification. And we cannot force him to do that. Only the court would be able to do it. Ryan Pitts lives in the USA. He has a wife and a child there. If it turns out that he's the kidnapped boy, Tomek, within a day, would lose the rights of an American citizen and would be deported to Poland. He wouldn't have the right to stay there because it would mean that all the documents of his origin had been forged. He'll do everything to avoid these tests because they would mean the end of his family. I'm afraid that I'll die without knowing the truth and the ending to this case. I came to the conclusion that in order to have 100% guarantee that Marcelina would be safe, I had to save her by myself. I moved to the negotiation phase and I asked the evil one what I had to do to save a child wants to sell a child for organs or to a brothel through you. What deal do I have to make with you to stop it from happening? No oh, fuck. Then we would be taking money. What money? First of all, you wouldn't be talking to me. I doubt it. Because? It would be, I think that... It would be Mr... Is there anything apart from money that could motivate them? Yeah. 
he'd have to come up with some sort of deal with them. But you work in a different sector, so you won't make a deal with them. They only care about money. What? What type of a deal? Some sort of exchange? A slut for a slut? A body for a body? So I'd have to give them some girl. You'd have to do something bad. Sell a girl for a kid? You'd have to do something bad. Or another kid for a kid? Exactly. Or what if I exchanged an adult person for that kid? 100%. That would also work? 100%. It would work for sure? Yes. But for what you want, you'd have to pay additionally. So here, there would be some amount to pay. Or an exchange. Or barter. So if I offered a guy or a woman, I'd have to pay additionally because they would be worth less than a child? You'd have to pay additionally one way or another. But if someone was in an urgent need for organs, you wouldn't afford such a deal. If we made a deal with those people that we'd sell them a child, and they'd give us money, we wouldn't be able to back out. Because for those people, too much money is at stake. They don't give a shit about us and that child. They only care for real American dollars, and nothing else. These people are devoid of human emotions. So if they are able to sell an alive child for organs, they will not think twice to cut our throats. It won't be a problem for them whatsoever. I solved that problem. I took the baby over from the traffickers and I saved it from being sold. And no one cut anybody's throat. Soon the mother came to a decision to give the baby up for legal adoption. The mother didn't care what would happen to the baby. Taking into consideration the set of circumstances, I recommended to her that a Catholic facility should take care of the adoption. You have to fill in the application. If you want, I can tell you which adoption facility she will be taken. It will be a Catholic one. Yes, I really want a Catholic facility. Then you'll have to write a few sentences. The reason? I don't expect you to describe anything in detail. But it must be here for sure. You have to put it in words somehow. I cannot tell you what to write. You have to come up with it yourself. I was waiting for the date of the court hearing, during which the mother was to confirm if she was actually giving her baby up for adoption. In the meantime, she went to a Catholic adoption center. How's baby? Do you have any information? She's healthy, pretty. Is she... Everything is really good. I have one picture. Could I see that picture? I have it somewhere in my phone. Okay. Now you really fucked me up, Patrick. You fucking smashed me into small pieces. At one point, the trafficker realized that during our meetings, he told me too much. You fucked me up. Really fucked me up. Because I see the way you look at me. And I see in your eyes. You know what? I don't want to see you anymore. I don't want it. I saw your eyes. The stuff we talked about. I do it. I do it too. Do you know that I've already called all my friends? And I asked them if they can imagine me as a pedophile. Do you know how fucking bad I feel about that? A man has no chance to win with a devil, because the devil is a million times more intelligent than we are. What we deal with is horrible, manipulative, merciless power. But when a man is close to God, then devil doesn't stand a chance. And it roars angrily like a lion, because it knows that it has already lost. Unable to get to me, the devil attacked the child trafficker. Do you know I wanted to fucking end my life? I really wanted to fucking do it. I called my kid. I called my son. And I told him, these are the last words you'll hear from me. I already cut my wrists, you know. Because of our conversations, I cut my wrists. I fucking cut my wrists. 
I'm sorry. Finally, the day of the court proceedings came, during which the mother was supposed to confirm her consent to give Marcelina up for adoption. I wanted to have proof this would happen. I'll start recording. We've been waiting here for 20 minutes already. Do you agree to that statement? Yes, I do. And this consent is given in full conscience, isn't it? Okay, let's print the protocol. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. If I manage to save one child, together we're able to save thousands. <laughs>